Hey everyone, my name's Logan, and uh, I know there's like a trillion fucking movement guide tutorials out on the on YouTube right now, but uh, I just wanted to make one because I started playing around August, uh, end of season nine, and I've been playing ever since and getting super into the movement tech and super into like everything about how this game works and just loving loving the tech. And I, I thought I'd share my knowledge to you guys because uh, everyone has their own different perspective and does everything a little differently so I'd, I'd like to show you guys kind of how I do my movement and uh, maybe help some people along the way and maybe teach someone some new things so uh, let's get into it alright so I do have a uh, keyboard overlay showing as you guys can see um, so you guys can see every movement tech I do and how I do it I used only the the right keys only the keys I use for everything um, so it's a little easier for you guys to see um, first tech we're gonna get into is the Probably the main tech you're gonna have to know and probably the first thing you're gonna need to do when uh, learning any type of movement tech in Apex Legends and that is tap strafing. So basically what you wanna do, um, first thing you wanna do before I get into how to do it is go into your mouse and keyboard settings, go to your move forward and up or down doesn't matter, bind it to whichever scroll wheel you want. So scroll up, scroll down, some people do up, I do down personally. And so basically in Apex Legends you don't have any momentum while you're in the air you can't change directions while you're in the air I can't if I look to my left and I hold W nothing happens if I look to my you know I don't know the science behind it I believe it's every W input kind of sends you a little bit forward so it constantly changes your momentum in air but uh, basically what you want to do is you want to jump hold a key A or D while in a you know while moving or after a slide or whatever and then um, Turn and as you're turning your mouse, you want to scroll your your uh, mouse whatever way you bound it to, so up or down. So you see how when I scroll down, I move forward a little bit because it's doing W input. So if I run and I jump and hold A and scroll down, you'll see that uh, I do a full 180. You want to make sure that you're scrolling down the entire time you're moving your mouse. If I scroll my mouse too fast and I whip, I'm not going to do it. So you want to make sure you're constantly scrolling down your mouse slowly as you make these turns. Sometimes you don't even need to hold the A or D, it kind of just turns you anyways, but A or D gives you like a more precise turn. You see like, I can turn kind of wide, or I can turn really sharp. Um, so that's the basics of tap strafing. It's fairly easy. If you already know that, let's get into the next thing. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to be teaching you guys is wall jumping. Wall bouncing, you know, however you want to say it. Um, so basically, you find any wall that way. isn't this big, because obviously I can't do it off something like this. Um, so basically what you want to do is... Uh, I'll show you guys how to uh, incorporate a tap strafe into it after I show you the first example. So wall jumping um, just off the rip is you want to run at a wall to the point where if you were to jump, you'd climb it. So like if I look right here and I jump, I won't climb it, right? So you got to look at the wall to the point of where you climb it. So what I want to do is I want to slide jump into the wall. And then as I get to it, um, also before I say that, um, same thing with the, with the tap strafing, you want to bind your other wheel to your jump that way when you're tap strafing it makes it easier to up down or you know for wall jumping it also makes it easier because you don't want to spam your space bar and you know so um basically you want to look at the wall slide jump into it scroll your mouse up so i'll do it without tap strafing this is how you do it without tap strafing just make sure you are looking at the wall enough to where you'd be able to climb it if i look too far left i won't do it if i look too far right i won't do it and make sure you're looking enough at the wall get that jump in all right so now we're on to tap strafing into a wall bounce or wall jump um basically what you want to do is same thing I've taught you tap strafing you're gonna want to you know practice your tap strafing a little bit practice your wall jumping a little bit and when you feel ready come up to a wall to practice i like to go vertically across the wall that way i can tap strafe into it but basically what you want to do is stand out a little bit if you're too close to the wall and i try to do it a little too close to the wall um, you could still do it, but it won't give you any momentum. So the more momentum out you get into the wall jump, the more momentum out you will get out of the wall jump, if that makes any sense. So the more, uh, the farther away I am from the wall when I hit the wall jump, the farther I will go out of it, if that makes any sense. So um, first thing you do is you run and you slide, then you want to do your tap strafe and then wall jump. And then you can also learn, so this is a tap strafe, wall jump. Yeah. Do it one more time. Tap strafe, wall jump. Now. You can also incorporate a tap strafe after you do the wall jump. So if I were to go into the wall jump and tap strafe out of it, I can go backwards. If I were to go into the wall jump and then tap strafe this way, I can climb that. Um, if I were to go for the wall jump and tap strafe just straight out, go farther out. See what I'm saying? So uh, for wall jump tap strafing, it's not super hard. 
Um, and it's very, very clean and easy to do. Like, let's say I'm running away from a guy and I'm boom, you know, right back on him. So um, it's just two very simple movement techs put into one. All right, next thing I want to teach you guys about is ledge bouncing. So as I said on that thing over there, you actually can't climb any wall. Uh, you can't wall bounce off any wall that um, is too too low. So you see, if I try to wall jump off that, I actually just mantle it and then uh, and then like kind of do a little hop off. I can't really can't really bounce off that. It's not really a wall jump. So what you want to do for a ledge bounce is you want to hold a directional key to get to it, like a tap strafe, like a normal wall jump, just like that. But when you get to the wall, when you interact with the wall, you want to hold the opposite direction key. So if I'm this way, I want to hold A to jump off. If I'm looking this way, I want to hold D to jump off. So I'm going to go into it like a normal wall jump tap strafe, and I'm going to hold D and then scroll my wheel up. Just like a normal wall jump, just hold D. And so that will actually cancel the mantle and give you a normal wall jump. It actually kind of gives you more momentum than a normal wall jump. Um, so yeah, ledge bouncing is good because obviously you can't wall jump off stuff like this, but if you know how to ledge bounce, you can. <clears throat> All right, the next thing I want to get into contains zip lines. Um, World's Edge is coming back in a couple days. As of right now, it is May 4th. Um, not sure what I'll be uploading this video, but May 10th will be the release of season 13 where World's Edge is coming back. So this will be a very helpful tip to those who want to get better on the zip lines instead of construction. Um, so basically what you want to do, have your feet planted on the ground. This is called a super jump. Um, so basically how it works is it's a very fast input, but not too hard to do. So what you want to do is get close enough to the zip line where you see ride doesn't have to be like, you don't have to be standing here to do it. So you could, you could run up and do it, but I'll show you that after. Um, basically what you want to do, look at the zip line. When it says E ride, you want to press your interact button, whether it's EF, whatever, and scroll your wheel up or down, whatever you bound it to at the exact same time to jump. And it will look something like this. You see, so that's called the super jump, but um, yeah, it's very cool tech. I like it a lot in buildings with a lot of zip lines, like construction on World's Edge and uh, you know, a lot of the World's Edge build buildings like Streamer and even some of the POIs on some point have some pretty good zip lines to do this on. So very good tech. You can also do it on vertical zip lines or, or horizontal zip lines from Pathfinder um, to send you up higher. You can do them off like, if I were to go up there, I could do it off those as well. They do not have to only be vertical. You can also do it while running up to it or anything. So like, let's say I'm running away from guy and I'm, oh, oof, you know, I'm behind you now. Oh, I'm running away, I'm running, oh, I'm behind you now. So uh, that's just a, this is just a normal one. And then if you want to incorporate trap strafing into it, that's how you can kind of get behind someone. So this is just a normal um, super jump. And then if I want to tap strafe it, um, you just want to do, you know, how to tap strafe A or D and then scroll your mouse down the entirety of your turn and it'll look something like this. All right, last easy kind of beginner tech before we start moving on to the more advanced techniques. Let's uh, let's talk about what I like to call redirecting, what everyone calls redirecting, I presume. It's basically a tech where the game on only mouse and keyboard, I believe, um, detects every input you do, whether it is A, B, S. When you're in the air, if you press a key, you'll start going that direction. But redirecting is best done when pressing S as well. So if I were to jump slide, you know, like normal jump slide like that, but I were to press S and A, it would look something like this. So it's basically tap strafing without having to do the tap strafe. Um, it'll be good for other techs I'll teach you f uh, later on in the video. It's not too great just by itself, but it will be good for some techs I'm about to teach you in a minute. Let's move on to something we call lurching. Lurching is basically uh, circle strafing. So a circle strafe is just this, where you're redirecting in a circle and jumping every time you hit the ground. And now everyone does lurching in different ways. Some people do straight, just circle strafes and call it lurching. Um, some people like Fontaine will sprint and then do a lurch and slide out of it like that. A lot of people mostly do it the way that kind of Angelo and Fontaine do it. They uh, kind of just do a circle. You can incorporate a tap strafe into it and make it a very big lurch circle strafe like that. If you can see my keyboard binds, the buttons I'm pressing, I am just basically doing a, a redirect in a circle like WAS while tap strafing. I'm not even moving my mouse very much and then I'm holding control at the end to slide it out of it. So what that's doing is it's taking my momentum, it's sending me backwards out of this jump, and then it's sliding me backwards. So if I had a Mastiff on this guy, and I was pumping him, and then I... You see, it's very good for close range combat, 
Um, not so much for far range, but for shotguns and uh, you know spray weapons up close is very good, very good tech. So again, let's run through it one more time. We've got the redirecting circle strafe, where you can, you know, or we've got the more advanced one where you incorporate tap strafing and crouching, and you can do more of a more of a kind of inconsistent and like scary strafe to people because they're not gonna know how you're strafing or how to hit that is very good and uh, I definitely recommend this as one of the techs you really try to learn because close range this will save you a lot of the time. Let's move on to the more advanced techniques of this video. Um, first one will be super gliding. Super gliding is a seven frame input based on the top of your, of your mantle. When you hit the top of your mantle and you see when I'm able to move, so if I hit my mantle and I don't touch anything, this is where I'll be. When I hit this part and I'm fully able to move, you want to press space C, but you want to do it basically at the same time. Some people say C before space is better. Some people say space before C is better. I'm honestly pretty sure it just comes down to your frame rate because this is a frame based input. So it's uh, if you guys have ever played melee or any other games like that, you there, it matters what frame you press your key on. So, when you space see it has to be at the right in between those seven frames um in order for you to get it so the lower S fps you have the easier it will be the more fps you have the harder it will be so um when you climb these you basically just want to space c um at the top and i'll show you what it looks like right now so that right there is a super glide how you know you hit the super glide is uh you'll notice your screen fov kind of widen as you hit it, um, your FOV will kind of, it looks like you almost hit hyperdrive almost. You go a really far distance. Um, but yeah, this tech is very good for closing distances. It's very good for um, pushing people. You can even incorporate a tap strafe into it to make it very hard to hit you if you were to fly over somebody. So that was a super glide tap strafe. Also, when it comes to ledges, um, other than super gliding, this is just a quick side note. Um, anytime you climb a ledge and you get up, um, this is how super gliding actually works is because you get a immediate momentum boost of a slide So if I were to climb up this ledge Once I hit the top of this maybe not anymore because I waited But if you slide as soon as you get to the top of this You'll actually get a full momentum slide and you can do that any direction. I could slide to the right I could slide to the left. So let's do it again So as long as you're looking that direction while you climb and then slide you'll go that direction immediately You do not have to wait for the cooldown. You can slide any direction you do not lose momentum. So no, now knowing that, let's get back to super gliding. So again, you want to climb your your climb, and about right here where I can move, I'm going to press S every time. So about when I press S, is about when you want to press space C. It will take a long time to master. I promise you guys, it is very hard, only because of the fact that it is frame input. And uh, I know a lot of you might be on high frames and a lot of you might be on low frames, So it might be easier for some of you and harder for some of you. So um, just keep practicing it and you guys will get it at some point. All right, now that we know super gliding, let's move on to some other super glide things that you can do um, with Wraith. Um, a Q super glide will actually take you farther. So that's a cued super glide. Same thing goes for Octane. If I were to stim up, and then super glide, I will also go farther. And this is because my movement speed, my movement speed is increased um, because of the abilities I'm using. Now this is really intricate, but I'm gonna show you guys just because I wanna include, include basically every movement tech in the game in this video. Um, you guys have my keyboard overlay, so I'm gonna try my best to explain to you how to do it and show you how to do it with my keyboard overlay. Um, but just note to you guys that it will be hard and you will have to practice it a lot. Don't give up. Um, now under Wraith, Another very intricate thing you can do with Wraith is uh, you can do what's called a port super glide. So basically you want to take your portal right up on the wall. Then you want to climb it. And when you hit the top of your climb, you want to super glide and then click. Setting a portal. So that is a port super glide. The port super glides are very good because you get extreme distance on it and you get to save your port. Um, this is very advanced though, so I'd, I'd recommend perfecting or at least getting four to five out of ten super glides um, consistently before trying to attempt this in game or, you know, attempt it as you wish if you hit it. Very awesome for you, but I, uh, I, I recommend learning how to normally super glide first because it is very, um, very different to try that. Alright, next thing I'm going to show you guys is under the wall jump category again. This is called fatigue jumping. Some people call it static wall jumping, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically what a fatigue jump is, is it's basically just a wall jump 
But as you see, if I jump on the wall and I wall jump without a slide, I actually don't wall jump. I actually just push myself off the wall. Some people like to do that for a little slide boost. So like if I were to jump and tap straight off the wall and then slide, I'd actually get this little boost of momentum um, as if I just slid to, you know, slide around, which this isn't too good. I wouldn't use this very much, but what I'm going to teach you guys right now is called fatigue jumping. So what fatigue jumping is, is you basically want to get your fatigue. So you see how if you jump more than once, you get a little fatigue. You're kind of, you're tired. You can't jump very high anymore. So what you want to do, take one jump, get your fatigue, come up to the wall and just hold W and scroll. This can be mixed in a bunch of ways. If you hold A or D when you do it, you can actually tap straight out of them. Um, if you hold, you know, if you hold S, you can redirect out of them. Anything you want to do, you can do out of these. Um, they're very good close range. Let's say there's a guy right here, right? And I have a Mastiff, so I'm going to rush him. You guys see? So, fatigue jumping is very, very good for, uh... Or close range combat, especially on maps like King's Canyon, Olympus, um, even some some most of World's Edge where there are very, very close quarters and, uh, you know, like buildings to play in and stuff. So fatigue jumping is definitely something to know. There's also another way to do it. I don't know if there is a direct name for this yet, um, but I call it the Spider-Man because kind of look like Spider-Man. So basically what you want to do, um, it's this exact same concept as ledge bouncing, right? But instead of immediately jumping off the wall, you want to give yourself a little bit to kind of run on it and then jump off. So I call this the Spider-Man um, because in third person POV, it kind of looks like you're a spider crawling across the wall. And I'm a fan of Spider-Man myself, so um, that's why I call it that. Um, but what I feel like this is good for is to kind of get around things that you normally can't. So let's say there's a guy around this let's corner this and I wall jump from here. Yeah, that's good distance on him. But if I were to Spider-Man that, I could get all the way around and if I and if I let the spider-man go on a little longer than that I can actually get even farther so uh, the farther you all run the farther you'll get so if I were to do it off this I could actually get pretty pretty good distance and you can do this off anything so since this works like a ledge bounce I actually don't need to only do them on big walls like this I could do them on small ones like these you can do them off anything so spider manning I feel like is a very underused um, tech that should be used a little bit more but might not be as useful as everything else but as I said before I want to include um, a, as many movement techs as I know into this video and if there are any more feel free to comment and let me know I missed some and maybe I'll make another one or uh, feel free to comment and tell me I'm stupid and blah 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 and yeah I probably am so the next thing is combining the fatigue jumping and the spider manning to do infinite wall jumps Fatigue jump into the Spider-Man, into a fatigue jump, into the Spider-Man, you see? So I can keep fatiguing into the Spider-Man all I want up until um, my character is about done or until you mess it up. Some other guy I watched, I don't remember his name too well. Um, if I find it, it will probably be in the description of this video. Um, showed a great tutorial on how to do this over there. You guys should definitely go check that out. Um, so I have one little movement tech I'll show you guys after the video is over but for now that we've gone through basically all the movement tech that I know in the game at least um, I'm gonna show you guys what basically everything looks like in third person so here's me in third person um, here's a tap strafe as I tell you guys earlier this is what a tap strafe would look like in third person um, so you can show your friends if they see you doing it like this it means you're doing it right um, you obviously notice in first person if you're doing it right also, but just as clarification, this is what it would look like third person if I were to be tap strafing. Here's what wall bounces would look like normally without tap strafe in third person. Here's what wall jumps would look like with tap strafes in third person. This is what ledge bouncing would look like in third person. So here's what the uh, circle strafes would look like in third person. Here's what lurching would look like in third person. Here is what a super jump would look like in third person.
what a super glide tap strafe would or a, this is what a super jump tap strafe would look like. Now we'll move on to what super gliding would look like. You'll notice when you hit a super glide, if your friends are ever watching you, if you're trying to test it, that your feet actually turn into pencils. So if you're ever trying to super glide, just look at your feet or have your friends look at your feet. Um, if they say you got pencil legs, you probably hit a super glide. So I'm going to skip straight to the port super glide for you guys. Setting a portal. So that's what a port super glide would look like. This is what fatigue jumping would look like in third person. And I believe that's it. So I do have one little last movement tech for you guys. Um, this is pretty new. I don't even believe there's a name for it yet. It's an Octane only. So if you're an Octane main, stick around. Octane has this ability um, where he can kind of strafe. Like, if I were to strafe left and right, you see how my momentum will die off. No matter any character I play, if I try to do this, my momentum will die off. But if you are Octane and you stem up, So um, basically what I'm doing is I'm um, I'm tab strafing left and right um, while B hopping with my scroll up and scroll down to tap strafe it. So I'm basically tab strafe B hopping left and right over and over. But as you see, if I do that, I actually lose momentum over time. Pretty crazy. So what you want to do is every time you hit the ground after one of these and you're about to jump for another one, you want to tap W. So what I do is I will tap W, 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 and you can keep it going for a little bit, but you won't go nearly as fast when you're not stimmed. Um, in third person, this looks pretty crazy, but uh, yeah, I will show you guys the third person POV in just a second. And I guess since I'm already Octane, I will uh, show you guys how to do these or what the stim super glide looks like in third person. So this is what it would look like in third person if I were to do the uh, bunny hop tap strafing thing. Ready, set, go. All right, well, uh, that's basically everything I know. Um, I may have missed some things. Let me know if I did. Um, let me know if you guys have anything that I don't know about or anything that I may have missed, anything um, that I may have not included, you know, all the jazz, anything um, movement-wise that I may not have talked about in this. Um, there are some in-game movement techs that I could do if you guys give this video a lot of love. I'll make another one um, showing the in-game movement tech um, that you can do on certain maps. Like on Stormpoint, you can throw a pad at a cannon and uh, actually have your double jump while taking a grav cannon. You can tap strafe out of gravity cannons. You can do this weird glitch off of um, tridents. You, there's a lot of tech I know that I'd love to be able to share with you guys. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this helped a lot of you. Uh, I'm really passionate about this game. I really fucking love Apex Legends and I love the movement tech and I love how intricate the game can be and how hard it really is um, to learn and master. I hope that the way I think about these things and the way I explain them and the way I show them kind of made them a little easier. So. Thank you all for watching, I appreciate it, and uh, yeah, till next time. Hey everyone, uh, it turns out I forgot a few things in the video, thank you to Fiddle Dude for helping me put these out. Um, I forgot to show you guys what a quick slide is, so a quick slide is basically where you press S, and then that small S input gives you the momentum to hit a slide if you go forward, so you shift W or just W if you have auto run, and then you should be able to immediately slide forward, so you back up for like 0.5 seconds, go forward, and you should be able to slide out of it at your opponent, so this is good for jiggle peeking corners against people, or you know anything you need to do um i also forgot to show you guys the third person spider-man so uh i i got that for you guys and i believe that's it so thank you guys so much for watching and uh, again i appreciate you guys and yeah that's it thank you so much